Union was saved by the immortal heroes at Gettysburg. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was, the Battle of Gettysburg. What an unbelievable — I mean, it was so much and so interesting and so vicious and horrible and so beautiful in so many different ways. It, it represented such a big portion of the success of this country. Gettysburg, wow. I go to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, to look and to watch. And uh, the statement of Robert E. Lee, who's no longer in favor — did you ever notice that? No longer in favor. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill. They were fighting uphill. He said, wow, that was a big mistake. He lost his great general, and uh, they were fighting. Never fight uphill, me boys, but it was too late. Gettysburg, wow. I mean, that was Donald Trump at a recent rally in Pennsylvania where he went on that weird riff about Gettysburg. I had no idea that Robert E. Lee had an Irish accent uh, and a quote that Robert E. never, ever said about fighting up all my me boys. The most ludicrous shit you've ever seen. But the only thing that makes it more ludicrous, you guys, is that a wonderful meme on Twitter, which we'll throw up here on screen, you know, that this this the high school, allegedly a high school teacher put up and he turned that script into a high school you know, final paper and put an F on it. But what makes it funny is you look carefully at this screenshot. It's actually that the Charlotte Mecklenburg Republican Party on their X slash Twitter account thought it was real. And they replied, you know, in other news, that's probably from a student in the Charlotte Mecklenburg schools led by your Mecklenburg Dems that totally tracks. We can't read or spell, add or locate countries on grade level, but you can make sure your feelings aren't hurt during SEL. Yeah, they thought that was a real paper from a real student and not former President Donald J. Trump. That's where we're at. You can't make this kind of stuff up. But you know, I can't leave the introduction of this show on this note, because on the same time, we're fighting real fights in America. And then we have my friend Tommy Tuberville, uh, a one-man wrecking crew for veterans, female service members. This is a man who sat on military promotions for nine months because of the travel policy that only a dozen service members ever used, allowing them to get health care, the reproductive health care they need. So. This is his latest idea because he's heard rumors that you know, a part of women's health care is abortion, by the way. And the VA, of course, takes care of female veterans. Well, Tommy don't like that very much. So this is where he was on TV. What you're doing and why you're doing it and how much it's costing the taxpayers. Well, we can't get anything. So I'm putting out the Transparency Abortion VA Act to try to get a little bit of, of cooperation from this administration. But they could care less. Uh, they... They hate this country the way it is. They want to transition it to something else, and they're doing a pretty good job of it. So why did I pick such disparate kind of openings, right? Well, I got a great guest who's a veteran, who's a former member of Congress. He's been spending a lot of time swimming in the Fox News, in the right-wing ecosphere of media, and fights these battles on these kind of myths coming from elected officials and the silliness about how much Trump loves us, et cetera. So I'm thrilled to have a great guest that's going to fight this battle, has been fighting this battle, and tell us a little bit about that, both from talking about veterans and how we serve our country and what this administration is doing to them, also what life is like when you go on Fox News every day. So let's get that conversation going. I am Fred Wellman host of On to Watch with F.P. Wellman, and you're right here in the My Such Network right now. Let's get on with the show. Oh, man, man. Welcome, welcome back. I am still Fred Wellman, your host. Same I was 30 seconds ago. This is Automox, the FP woman. I am really excited to have a guest. It's it, one of my favorite things to do, as you guys know, is get my friends on. I'm very blessed with friends who are actually accomplished, unlike me. <laughs> and so I'm thrilled to have a good friend who's both a friend and a warrior for our service members and our country. Patrick Murphy, Congressman Patrick Murphy, who is the first post 9 11 veteran to serve in Congress, representing the great citizens of Pennsylvania. He's also, I think from there, you went and joined MSNBC, and then you're undersecretary of the Army, and then acting secretary of the Army. You started a PAC, <laughs> you know, and Investment company and veteran. I mean, and now you're on Fox. So, Patrick, welcome to the show, man. It's a thrill to have you here, brother. Oh, Fred, thanks so much for having me, brother. I appreciate it. Go airborne. Who? Uh, see, and you're gonna get that in early. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those who understand, I am 101st guy, 101st air assault, and Patrick was 82nd airborne. Of course, we all get along. And one of the biggest mistakes my son ever made was he went to the airborne out of the 82nd. So, <laughs> just to so when my son joined, you know, you'll appreciate it, Patrick. When when Dylan went to 82nd, one of the first things he did was buy all this 82nd shit for me. <laughs> <laughs> and make yeah, me course, wear it, you know, it made me wear that crap. But, you know, I'm a proud father, so I had to wear some 
second airborne yep. crap. Yeah, <laughs> you know. veteran, and my two uncles served in Vietnam, but the one was actually with the 101st in Vietnam. So, there you go. See, great uh, legacy. Yeah, you know, I, I just, yep. you know, seven years there, I just loved it. So, you know, I, I opened with the cold clip of you know, as a Pennsylvanian, you know, Trump speaking about you know Gettysburg. Wow, <laughs> you know, and then and of course the famous not quote from Robert O. Lee. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. never fight uphill, me boys. I mean, what was your first thought? You saw that. Um, <laughs> just God bless America, my friend. Yeah, just there God you bless go. America. So I'm, I'm trying to be gracious. And you are. Be respectful. Yeah. That's what you're good at, my friend. You know, I, my second yeah. clip I ran was more relevant to our lives, and that is, and I was kind of doing these two clips. You know, Tommy Tuberville is once again doing his thing, kind of attacking the VA and the military. He's passionate about the, the ability for military females to get abortions, uh, and he's accusing the VA of giving abortions, so he's saying he wants to, you know, He's been a one-man wrecking crew, I think, for military readiness and women. But out of that clip also, I kind of want to begin, you kind of see him once again attacking, you know, Biden, attack, saying Biden's attacking America, saying Biden doesn't support veterans. You know, I've been seeing a lot of that in Republican circles. I know you see it in your time at Fox News. We'll get, we'll get to discussion more. But it kind of drives me crazy, the idea that's out there floating so much, even in our circles on the left now, that this administration isn't doing enough for veterans. It's, it's almost like a stereotype. And you and I know that's not true as veterans. I mean, how do you defend that, to, to, to deny that? It's not true at all. Yeah, there's, there's there's folks out there that are gaslighting Americans, and and the ones that read the paper and really know or or live, breathe, and eat this stuff, they they know that Joe Biden, his two sons are veterans, whose two sons uh, care, and and his whole family they have devoted uh, their lives you know to our great nation, and you know whether it's the PACT Act, which has you know been transformational for our brothers and sister veterans, or whether it's him showing up, uh, him showing up. You know, when the cameras even aren't around, right. uh, being there for our brothers and sister veterans, doing what's possible, you know, his wife with joining forces, you know, it's just a remarkable family. And uh, I was close with Bill Biden, who's no longer with us, as you know, and okay. Bill Biden was just a great American. Uh, I was at his funeral and we were both elected in the same year back in 2006. You know, oh. and I just came back from Iraq. I just ran for Congress. We were both in the same media market, uh, the Philadelphia media market. And, and the reality of it is, 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 uh, you know, he was the best among us and, you know, to, to continue his legacy, support veterans through the PACT Act. I will tell you, uh, in Pennsylvania, we're getting a new hospital, VA hospital in Philadelphia. And for why that's important. And so I don't care what these jokers say about it. I'm telling you the facts. These are the facts. Um, you know, the average civilian hospital is 16 years old. The average VA hospital uh, is 59 years old. Wow. So the Philadelphia VA hospital, which was built after World War II, is is close to 70 years old. And the reality of it is, is that, you know, it wouldn't have gotten done if it wasn't for Joe Biden. And so we have an MOU, they have a signing, they did, you know, big signing ceremony. You know, they're, they're building a new VA hospital in Philadelphia. And not just Philadelphia, out in Chester County, Pennsylvania, they're building a new clinic. Wow. And that's all under the PACT Act, right? So people, you know, target exposures and, and, and making sure we treat that, that's really important, especially folks like you and I, they, you know, I was part of the invasion force in Iraq with the 82nd Airborne Division. Yep. But we got to take back, you know, we have this ethic that we say, leave no one behind. Well, you know what, for far too long, our brother and sister has been left behind. It was Joe Biden that made sure he delivered up for the PACT Act uh, and, and, and Congress with him, right? Because yeah. he can't do it himself. And that was a bipartisan bill. And, you know, now we're seeing the fruits of that labor come to fruition. Yeah, I'm one of them. I just filed my my PACT Act claim. I, I They flew me to D.C. As a matter of fact, I, I went to, to visit the VA as the deadline was coming up for veterans to file the first year. Uh, one of the wonderful things in that bill that was passed is that you had a full year. If you filed within a year, at least an intent to file a new claim, it would be backdated a year. So that's a lot of money for those veterans are getting. And, and they're paying out millions of dollars. Hundreds of thousands of veterans are getting their care. And I, I was surprised when I went to go file my, my PACT claim that the website's been updated, that I could update my old claim from 2000. 10 easily right there on the web. I didn't need somebody to help me. I actually did it myself. It was intuitive. I mean, this VA is very different. I'll tell you this wonderful conversation I had. I did call to follow up my claim the other day and I was talking to the one. First of all, I dialed the VA and immediately got a human. I was never put on hold in broad daylight. I mean, it, you you get it. <laughs> you know, you in a government, yeah. you know. I mean, I was shot. I listened to the guy. I said, holy shit, you're here. <laughs> and then two, right. he and I, he was a veteran and we were chit-chatting and he was talking about his claim that he put in and my claim at the end. And, and he, he answered all my questions and I said, man, you guys are really doing good, man. He goes, man, this last two years has been great. 
He literally said that to me as a VA employee. Man, the last two years have been great. You know, and that just says so much yeah. about the what Mr. McDonough has brought to the table, especially since you know a lot of people are worried about Mr. McDonough because he wasn't a veteran, right? But you know, McDonough has come in. He's he's run a very professional organization. None of the drama that existed under the Trump administration, you saw it. Uh, it's just a very different VA. It's a very different veterans experience, I think. And that is coming down from you know one of the things we pointed out during the campaign. You know, as a Lincoln Project was, I told people they were shocked to know that Joe Biden. Is the, is the first president since Eisenhower that's a blue star dad that had a son or a child serve in the military since Dwight D. Eisenhower, the first one. And that, that yeah. you know, that matters, you know, being a military yeah. family matters. You know, and, yeah, and, and, and go ahead. No, I was just saying, put the son served. And, and you know, I have a, yeah. a daughter, Maggie, and a son, Jack, and 17 and 14. And it would be my such an honor of a lifetime if, if they decide to serve. I'm not going to force them to do anything. But, you know, I tell them about that the military changed my life when I joined in 19. You know, I never would have been uh, commissioned as an Army officer, go to teach at West Point, two combat deployments. And then, obviously, to be the first Iraq War veteran elected to Congress, that, that, that wouldn't have happened for me. I was a blue-collar kid from a row house in Philadelphia. My dad was enlisted in the Navy. My mother was a secretary, and the Army changed my life. And my brother, who was in the Air Force, changed his life. He did two deployments at the 9-11 like I did, uh, and he's doing phenomenal as well. That's a family business. My son, as I mentioned, was in the 82nd Airborne for, for four years. And my, my son-in-law still serves uh, with Virginia National Guard. He's an e he, uh, God, I guess he's getting ready to be an E-8, for God knows. So incredible. Uh, <laughs> incredible. <Wow. laughs> you know, he's doing better than I ever did. You know, I, so you've got this, you know, wonderful family legacy. Wellman's for me. I've served, you know, my dad served World War II. So it is our family business, you know. And and and, and transition to that, it does something you, that comes up a lot for you, I think, as you. So you're on Fox News. We, one of the reasons we want to have you on the show is you're, for those who don't know, Patrick is, is one of the brave Brave souls who goes on Fox News as a progressive a centrist, if you want to even more, you know, and to talk about the issues and and take on the host. Your regular appearances on there. Um, I, I think I guess up front transition from the military conversation. You you know you're still involved in the army. One of the accusations against the military you hear a lot on Fox News. You hear a lot in the, in the halls of Congress is this wokeness idea that the military is not prepared. I mean, you're still much more involved in than I was with the military as a former undersecretary of the army. Uh, is that a real attack? I mean, it, it, how do you push back against that idea that this this woke mind virus is infecting the military and undermining our readiness? Yeah, no, and, and it's the folks that never served that are that are the largest you know, bomb throwers in that, and, and it doesn't help with our recruitment. And, and right. we we hire in the army 120,000 Gen Zers now a year, and, yeah. and you know when I when I was helping lead the army uh, with then chief of staff, you know Mark Milley, you know it was all about the next generation, next greatest generation, and, and so uh, I will tell you that these young Americans, these Gen Zers. They want to be bigger than themselves. They want to be part of a team. Um, and the Army or the military provides that. But but when you have people on the outside, oh, they're woke. If they're so woke and it changed so much, why are retention numbers in our military so good? Yeah. Even when the economy's going great, you know, the record, you know, unemployment uh, and, you know, five decades, um, stock market at highest it's ever been. Uh, and so we have more job openings. We have unemployed Americans, all, all that stuff, right? Yep. But when you look at that, uh, that's why people still stay in because they love the military. And you know, we don't care what color your skin is, you know, the God you believe in, who you love. We just care. Can you carry an M4 assault rifle? Can you kick down the door? Can you do what's necessary? Take out people who are trying to hurt our families back to your home. And for those people outside that talk about woke and oh, you have DEI training, it's a an hour for a year, you know. Yeah. The, the, you're doing tens of thousands of hours on the ranges and in combat and and you know combat readiness training and all that. It's like, come on, man! Like, yeah. get get the military out of your mouth if you're not going to be part of the solution here. <laughs> exactly it, and that's what drives me so crazy. There's never people. And, 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 but I get mad when I do see veterans in Congress. You know, we have our we have peers or you know former service members who say these things, and and it is just and you know they're lying through their teeth. They know it's not true, right? The combat training is what the combat training is. But we do have to have a recognition that it's a very broad. We have to get everybody in. Only about a third of Americans even qualify to serve, right? No, it's not even a third. Fred, it's, it's less than that now. 23%. 23%. Wow. Uh, and mostly because of the obesity crisis in America. Yeah. You know, and um, and we got to do a better job. You know, I always say that the greatness of America is where the Athens and Sparta, uh, you know, we're thinkers, and but we got to be doers as well and warriors. So it's that weird class of America we got to tap into to let them know that it's not just about playing high school football or hockey or baseball or track and field or whatever, or softball, whatever you do. It's, you can do all those great things. You're going to learn all about leadership when you're doing it, but then join America's varsity team. 
join the U.S. military. We'll really hone your skin, your your skills. We'll really make sure that you have a higher level skill set when you leave to be this incredible civic asset. That you're ready to create the next Nike or the you know the next iconic global brand. Because you know, Fred, you know this. You know, I, I have a venture capital company. I, I focused. Uh, I focus on investing in veteran companies. I yeah. invest in over 62. So over wow. $32 million I've raised and, and helped raise and, and support and then obviously distribute. And I invest in these young Americans. Why? Because half the veterans of World War II start their own small business. And they created companies like Nike. Phil Knight was an Army yeah. veteran, him and Bill Bowerman. They created Walmart, the largest retailer in the world. Sam Wall, an Army veteran. The largest media company in the world. Ralph Roberts, Navy Air, World War II veteran. Um, I can go on and on. FedEx. Uh, yep, FedEx. Well, I was going to say, and then the next generation, Vietnam, uh, Fred Smith, you know, yeah. Marine, starting the largest logistics company. But our generation, Fred, um, you know, I'm all about solving problems for our country. So I did it when I was in Congress, you know, co-sponsoring the, the post 9 GI Bill. And right now there's about 1.1 young Americans using the GI Bill. I, I did it by, you know, authoring the Murphy Amendment was repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Uh, so our troops could serve openly. But now, you know, when I say, man, half the veterans in World War II create their own small business and create these great global brands, our generation is less than 5%. So there's a lot more we got to do. So that's why I raise this money. I invest it in our brothers and sisters, uh, and they are crushing it. They're absolutely crushing it. Yeah. I mean, that's it. And, and you're also helping get elected too, right? I mean, you're seeing more of our veteran, our peers from the post 9 generation going into Congress than they have in, in quite a while. Still not enough. I know you've been involved. You have taken the Hill Pack, which is a, a, a thematic from when you were on, on TV originally. Um, and you're getting more elected and, and, and at every level. And you're not just looking at Congress, are you? Don't you guys focus on pretty much every level of election, don't you? Yep, yeah, we, we, we focus on uh, veterans who want to go into political public service. So uh, are taking the help pack, you know, we, we invest in, because as you said, the problem there is, you know, 50 years ago, every five members of Congress, four of the five were veterans. Now of every five, it's less than one out of every five are veterans. So there's a lot of work to do because veterans will tend to put the country first, They'll put the country over the party. They'll do things necessary to move our country forward. Um, and we don't see, as we all know, enough of that right now. Yeah, it's tough. But it's all tough. So we also have to be honest, too. We've seen so unfortunate uh, from some of our partners. You know, I won't mention names. Eli Crane. Uh, <laughs> you know, Dan Crenshaw. I mean, we've there is some frustration with um, those of us, those who have sort of gone the other directions, too. I mean, but I do think I, I bring that up only because it also recognizes society. I mean, the first thing you learn in military 101, right? Literally, military science 101 is what I took as a cadet in 1983. My God, I'm old. Is that the volunteer military is a reflection of the society it represents. And I think our veteran mm -hmm. corps is also also side that represents and all of those challenges that go with it um but we do bring certain skills and certain experiences to the table that i think are different you know i think there's a great place to take our first break actually for our sponsors and then when we want to come back uh, we're going to we're going to talk about fox news brother because uh, whether you like it or not i want to hear what life is like on there so let's talk to our sponsors first and we'll come right back lumen is the world's first handheld metabolic coach it's a device that measures your metabolism through your breath and then on the app, it lets you know if you're burning fat or carbs and gives you tailored guidance to improve your nutrition, your workouts, sleep, and even your stress management. Now, all you have to do is breathe into this device, your lumen, first thing in the morning. You'll know what's going on with your metabolism, whether you're burning mostly fats or carbs. Then lumen gives you a personalized nutrition plan for that day based on your measurements. You can also breathe into it, you know, before or after workouts and meals. So that way you know exactly what's going on in your body in real time. And Lumen will give you tips to keep you on top of your health game. Now look, after 20 years in the army, being starved in ranger school, living on combat rations when deployed, I've had to learn really well how my metabolism is my, my body's engine. It's how your body turns the food you eat into the fuel that keeps you going. And honestly, guys, as I've aged, I've become more increasingly aware of how I must balance my exercise and diet. Our metabolism is the center of everything our body does. Optimal metabolic health translates to a bunch of benefits for me, including helping with my weight management, improving energy levels, getting better fitness results, and better sleep. And I really love how Lumen gives me recommendations to improve my metabolic health every single day. Now, look, I've been on a mac, you know, macro management diet program before. Uh, I've, I've tried all different kinds of techniques. I learned the key to metabolic health is through these many years is something called metabolic flexibility. And that's where Lumen has really helped me. 
It refers to your body's ability to efficiently switch between using different fuel sources like carbs and fats. There are preferred times to use each and how well you can switch places you on the metabolic flexibility spectrum. Now, after getting to know you through your breath, Lumen gives you a metabolic flex score that can track and improve upon each day instead of a set macro number you use without changing. So if you want to take the next step in improving your health, go to lumen.me and use code FRED to get $100 off your Lumen. That is L-U-M-E-N dot M-E and use FRED at checkout for $100 off. I highly recommend it. Thank you, Lumen, for sponsoring our episode. You know, if you've watched this show or follow me on social media, you know, I'm always talking about that when I'm not in the studio, I'm either hiking, out walking, or working in my giant garden. And now that it's springtime, I'm toiling away out there almost every day. And living a more heart healthy life fuels all the things that I do. So I'm really excited to introduce three in one blood pressure support plus CoQ10 from Super Beats Heart Chews Advanced. Now, pair with a healthy lifestyle, the grapeseed extract of Super Beats is clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle just alone. Now, Super Beats Heart Choose Advanced supports healthy CoQ10 level, and that's an important nutrient for your heart health. Now, look, I'll grab mine, I'll chew them as I head out the door for my walk or into the backyard. I get a boost of energy. And you know what? For me at my age, it gives me peace of mind that I'm being more mindful of my heart health. It's far and away my favorite supplement and easily fits into my daily lifestyle, which is a busy one, as you know. Now, this CoQ10 generates 95% of the cellular energy your heart needs, but it can decline with age, stress, and statin use things in my life. A powerful 3-in-1 formula for healthy blood pressure is it what the Super Beats Heart Chews Advanced conclude. They feature grapeseed extract, beetroot powder, and CoQ10. And as I mentioned, there's no pills to swallow, no ingredients to mix or prepare. It's plant-based. There's no artificial sweeteners or colors. So find out you can get a free 30-day supply on bundles of new Super Beats Heart Chews Advanced. Save 15% by going to GetSuperBeats.com. That's get super B E-E-T-S dot com. Thanks for sponsoring our show. And we're back. So, Patrick, <laughs> you know, I don't know how you do it. So, you know, you become a regular on Fox News and, well, gosh, last, over last, how long have you been on? Over a year now, haven't you? Yeah, over a year. They gave me uh, a, my own series. I did a five-part series, uh, five 30-minute specials uh, called The Warrior Class. So right. I, I got a chance to sit with great American heroes and, and talk to them about their, their path to leadership. I had folks like the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley. Yeah. And where did I interview him? I interviewed him at the National Constitution Center because it's all about the Constitution. I, and I said to him, I said, hey, chairman, I'm not going to jam up. I don't want to talk to you about Lafayette Square. I want to go to the – why when you were a young cadet uh, at Princeton University where he played hockey, I go, why did you join the, the military You know, back in 1980? You know, he's a class of 80, so he's really you yep. know, 76 area. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, why did you do that when you could, have, you know, you playing the division one hockey, you could have did other things and, um, and you know, what that constitution means, uh, you know, and even that preamble of our constitution, I mean, it is a righteous document. Even the preamble says we, the people in order to form a more perfect union, we knew back in the forefathers knew back in the day, they said, we are not perfect, yeah. you know, but every day we got it. We have an re- awesome responsibility to make this the greatest country on earth, to make this a country that under, understands we're a great country because we're a good country. And we understand that we're not perfect and we got to work every single day to make it a more perfect union. Yep. And that's, that's what the oath we swear when we start. So, you know, you, you've been there and from there you transitioned to being like the lonely progressive voice or centrist voice on a lot of the show. <laughs> you know, you're going to, you dive into the lion's den every day, you know, and, and there's other media of all the media outlets in the world for you to choose, you know, one that has been kind of openly hostile to a lot of things that we believe in, especially as progressives. Um, do you think that, I mean, is your, do you, why do you, I guess you almost say it's a number of questions, right? Do you think your, is your value, your voice there? Are there, are there movable audience members? There are movable members of the staff there that listen to the larger worldviews you present? Yeah. So as you said, Metro, I have my own show at MSNBC. Yeah. Uh, I love those at the Congress. Rachel Maddow has been a friend and mentor of mine. Uh, I, I love her. Uh, and I was really grateful. I went to the Pentagon to run the army or help run the army under president Obama Okay, new administration comes in. I did not do any politics at first. I said, listen, I want to go, yeah. you know, create this venture capital company, create my own business, you know, do what I'm doing, teaching at the Warren Business School. Uh, so I got all those things lined the first few years. And then I'm like, okay, now I'm ready to get back in. And, you know, I went back and I talked to folks, but 
I will tell you, Fox was really, they said this, we love veterans. We'd love to have you be part of our fold and we'll give you this five part series. And so, you know, I said, yes. And, and yeah, I'm hooking a jab with Fred, as you mentioned. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I, I look at it like the sheer numbers of, you know, they actually have more Democrats that watch Fox news during a day than MSNBC, mm. you know, they, they're, they're rated number one. And I'm not trying to, I'm not bashing anyone. I, I love everyone I worked yeah. with in the past and stuff, but you know, I look at it, if, if I'm there to, to, to let people know my voice and where I think our country should be going, which is really, you know, right down the middle, right down the center, you know, again, and listen that there's Republican ideas that are really good and there's Democratic ideas that are really good, but get the best ideas and move it forward. Um, and that's why I've been so successful. And that's why, frankly, I think Joe Biden has been so successful. When you look at things like the bipartisan infrastructure bill, when you look yeah. at the bipartisan PACT Act, when you look at the bipartisan Chips and Science Act, these aren't just pieces of legislation that sit on some shelf. It's changing lives every day. So as an example, the CHIPS Act, right? We are in a fight against China. In Asia right now, where chips are being made, that's a national security issue. And when there's a supply shortage after COVID, during COVID, yep. we saw like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happens if they go and invade Taiwan and then we can't get the chips that we need for our cars, for our computers, for satellites, et cetera. Yep. And so what do we did? We invested about $53 billion over the next several years on the CHIPS Act. What did that trigger? That triggered a 10x investment from the private sector. So that's why you have Intel, Intel company, investing $100 billion just themselves on making chips in places like Columbus, Ohio, wow. places like Oregon. And so like these are manufacturing jobs. These are good paying jobs that are in the last decades. Yeah. And so you know that's what I get fired up about. Now, I understand, Fred. That is not sexy. They want me to call people, you know, racist and, and blah, blah, blah. Like, like, I'm not there. I'm there to try to unify the country and tell yeah. it like it is. Yeah. I give the people straight. And, and, you know, and I think Joe Biden has done a hell of a job after the worst global yeah. pandemic we've had in decades, where we lost 1 million Americans, getting the ball moving on behalf of all Americans, not just red Americans, not just blue Americans, but red, white, and blue. Right. And those manufacturing jobs, the jobs in those places, those are red places. I, you know, one of my favorite jokes is, you know, I, I helped Marcus Flowers run against uh, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene last cycle. Didn't go where we want to. But she's constantly batching, you know, the Chinese and the electric cars and EVs. And one of the largest electric battery factories in the world is being built right in Dalton, Georgia. <laughs> you know, and, yep. I, I, you know and, and, and these are really good jobs for average Americans that are high tech, a lot of them. And, and they're, they're, they're putting good money and they pay well. That is what makes that's going to move this country forward. I mean, manufacturing is coming back in this country uh, after all these years of begging for it. But you're right; it was an investment by this administration that that got that going, and and they do need to hear that because the denials are everywhere else, right? Yeah, and that's why I, I'm out there like hooking the jab. I'm talking about the positive stuff and say, hey, yeah. it was Congress too, by the way, which yeah. is co-equal branch of government because. You know, as you know, I taught constitutional law at West Point. Yeah. Like we had, we had, it's like rocks, paper, scissors. You have three branches of government. It's the Congress that controls the budget. So it was a bipartisan bill via Congress with the president passing it to move to get these jobs moving forward. Which again, that leads me to immigration. People are like, oh, well, he's doing executive order. The bipartisan <laughs> immigration bill that passed the Senate from one of the most conservative Republicans in the Senate, James Lankford, who worked for months and months and months with Chris Murphy, my classmate in Congress, and they got it done. They passed it in a bipartisan way. And what happens? Donald Trump tells the House Republicans, hey, don't vote for it. Don't vote for it. We need this for election year. And like sheep, they're like, okay, we're, we're against it. It's like, why? And I'm like, that bill – We'll put 3,000 more folks on the border. Right. We're talking about border patrol agents. We're talking about fentanyl screening, you know, the high-tech scre yep. screening there. We're talking about more immigration law judges. They get the backlog to make sure we, you know, doing the right thing. And they're like, well, you can't do it, be just executive order. And that's what the frustrating thing for me, because people like out in America are like, well, why can't they? And I'm like, because we don't have an art, you know, like – we're not having a dictatorship in America. No. We have co-equal branch of government. One controls the budget. One executes in the budget and legislation. And it's like, yeah, come on. You can't make magic like, money magically appear. You know, here in Missouri, right. so and, and it goes everywhere. It is political. It is a political dance. You know, in Missouri, I was just saying the other day, the Missouri legislature this year since January has not passed a single bill to the governor until yesterday. And Patrick, do you know what the first bill they finally sent to the governor was $2.2 million to ship 200 Missouri National Guardsmen and 25 state troopers to Texas. 
for this fake border mission. Yeah. So the only yeah. bill <laughs> is a political stunt because the Texans are saying, oh, we need help because the government won't give it to us. Well, he doesn't have the budget to give it to him. And so now you've got states, these red states, literally spending money. I mean, $91,000 in this $2.2 million is to buy civilian vehicles for these guys while they're in Texas. <laughs> Because it's yeah. not an official military mission they're on. The right. lunacy of a problem they create, then they identify, and then they say it's a bigger problem. But now it's regular America, regular Missourians are going to pay. The regular taxpayers yeah, are paying yeah. for this at this point, right? You know, and my this, money. And, and this is this is this is why I, it's personal to me, Fred, and, and, and I'm sure you probably feel the same way. But you know, when I was in Iraq in the Asian, yeah. you know, when it was 138 degree heat, I'm in that battle rattle, and, and you know, I'm leading my there with team. You. And, I was there with you. Know, you. Yep, as Captain Murphy at the time. Yep. I, I will tell you what. I lost 19 of my brothers. 19 because I was an infantry unit, and, you know, at the time, we'd have women in infantry units. And so at that time, of the 19, one was not even American citizen attached to us, right? He was right. earning his citizenship. He was just as much American as anybody else. And the people out there that want to demonize immigrants in our country, and again, don't get me wrong, we got a security border. It's an national security issue, so I'm not, I'm not saying that. Yeah. But this is what I am saying. Immigration is a resource we have to manage. Immigration, when you look at the Francis Scott Key Bridge that three and a half weeks ago at 1.30 in the morning when you had a team of eight guys who were, who were literally filling in potholes until the ship came and, and took out that bridge and six of them perished, two were saved. Six of them perished. They were immigrants, man. Yep. They were working jobs that most folks don't want to work at 1.30 in the morning filling potholes yep. in a construction site. And all across America, one in four construction jobs are filled by immigrants. You look at who's cleaning rooms and, and hotels and motels. You look at who's cutting the lawns out there across America. I mean, come on. People know. And it's so easy to demonize them when they're on TV and, so, and, and in Washington, D.C. And, and they look the other way when it's their own house That's being it. cleaned by other people, when it's their own hotel room, when it's their own streets that are being paved. And so, like, I just want people to realize that we have the greatest country in the world and we are a nation of immigrants. Let's do it the right way. And you can't just by doing it by saying, just shut off the border. That is crazy town. Yep, that's it. And, and you have a similar experience. My first war was Desert Storm. I was a major and when we went in Iraq. And, but in Desert Storm, one of my young uh, crew chiefs um, uh, was, was a Mexican immigrant. He was an American citizen. When we got back from the war, I was actually one of his sponsors to get his citizenship. He got his citizenship. This young man, transitioned from being an enlisted man to being a warrant officer. He ended up serving 25 years in the military, ended up flying Gulfstream jets for the military, no. okay? No. Gets out, now he's a pilot of the Southwest. Why is he, what route does he have for the Southwest? The South American, because he speaks fluent Spanish. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. The, th that is the bread and butter of America right there. A young man who came yeah. to America as a, a young man, a Mexican kid, served in combat, ugly combat, Got a citizenship, yep. and now he's now when you get on that Southwest Airlines plane, it's going to kill these people to know when they get on that Southwest Airlines. One of my young immigrant soldiers is flying your ass, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. And you're yeah. right; it, that is that yeah. is the American story. We came in 1640, like my family, or two, wait, what 1994, like his. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. you know, right. and, and that's a hard. But, fight I tell, to but yeah, but I tell these stories. You know, I go on the lines then, and I tell these stories on Fox News and Fox Business, etc., because. Like I want to speak to America. I don't want yeah. to just speak to the choir. I'm talking out that I want to talk to the congregation. Yep. You know, and, and that's what I do. And I don't hold back. I tell it how it is. And I get the hate now. I got a oh, I Murphy, you're communist. You don't love America. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like I'm like, come on, man. Like two combat deployments from brother them to the point for dad's a veteran. My grandfather's a veteran and served in the Pacific World War II. Like, yeah. Who the hell do you think you're talking to, brother? Yeah. Like, I yeah, I, and so, you know, and I just laugh. I don't let it bother me. I don't lose sleep about it. And by the way, to people on the far left say, El Murphy, you're a sellout because you're you know, part of the Fox family. You My know next what? question. Hey, guess what? Hey, yeah. Get, like, Bring it on. I, I'm not there to appease you. I am there to talk to my fellow Americans to let them know what's going on. Right. And what's going on is we went through uh, the, one of the worst freaking things that happened in American history. We lost 1 million Americans to COVID. Uh, and it's a, it was you know a sad time. But we have Joe Biden there, yeah. not telling people to, to do shots of Clorox. We have <laughs> Joe Biden there putting manufacturing jobs back to the table. We have Joe Biden there saying, hey, let's do it the right way. We have Joe Biden there to the folks in the far left saying, hey, listen, our number one friend is the number one only democracy in the Middle East, and that's Israel. But he's telling his friend, hey, man, like, make sure you're doing this stuff the right way. Like, you, you know, friends are there for each other. Friends are loyal, but friends also call each other out if they're not doing it the right way. And he's right. been real strong with BB, and he's saying, hey, man, watch what you're doing there. There's too many civilians 
that are not part of Hamas, you know, that are dying, yeah. you know? And so we just got to make sure we know who the, like the good guys are and the, and the bad guys are uh, not just overseas, yeah. but in our own country. Right. And, and it's, look, it's not perfection. All right. People make mistakes where, you know, we're not in a cult, um, but we have to have these conversations directly with the American people, make them understand. And it is a, it is a, I mean, I say, I, I've said before, it's a brave thing you do to go on there and, and take the face shots. And I, and I get that you take, and I think you and I've talked about, it, you take the face shots from both sides uh, because you chose to go on there. You know, it's, it's, it's never understood very well. And, and I get that. You know, I think one of the things I do love about you though, is you, and, and, and I always want to get your opinion on this. I saw you back in March discussing Biden's, they were kind of, remember they're all bashing Biden for his stumbles and all uh, but you said something great. I remember, I think it's on your Instagram, you know, like, you know, he needs to get out there more. He's got there and fight. Well, yeah. since the state of the union, <laughs> I mean, you saw the yeah. say, you know, holy shit. I mean, honestly, that was a bell ringer. And he's been out there fighting now. His social, this, their, their, their social media is wrapped up. I mean, it really looks like it's a much more aggressive Biden we've seen in the last month, month and a half. I mean, are you, are, is that what you're looking for? I mean, what, how do you, what do you think of this new sort of uh, roll their sleeves up Biden campaign? I love it because guess what? I, I get it. He's gonna have stumbles, right? Right. I mean, but you know, both these candidates they're they're older, you know, and all that stuff, and they're gonna stumble. But okay, but you know, you you heard the same thing when you were in the military, when you know, our army, Fred. That yep. you know, your soldiers don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. Hmm. And Joe Biden, pound for pound, cares for the American people more than any other elected that we've had right now in our country serving, and, and he cares. Yes, he has some stumbles, but you know what? The guy is a workhorse. He is not a show horse. He is pumping points on the board when it comes to your economy. And let me tell you, when people, I say, the stock market has never been higher. Unemployment has never been lower. You know, you know, people are like, well, their gas is high. I'm like, listen, you know why gas is high? Yes, it was over five, you know, dollars a gallon. It's now down to, you know, about 325. Yep. But guess what? Let me tell you something. You know why? Because the three most, you know, biggest oil production companies or countries in the world is the United States of America. Russia and Saudi Arabia, America. We have never produced as much oil and natural gas in our history under Joe Biden, yep. like ever under his leadership. Right? What? But what's going on? Russia. They invaded illegally Ukraine, yep. and that jacked up prices all over the world. Yep. The prices in America are actually cheaper than they are in the rest of the world. But people don't want to. They just want to look. Oh, and they're trying to blame Joe Biden about you know the Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It's like. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> I know. That's it. Like, or, or, or not stopping Israel. That's my favorite. You know, it's like, that's not what it is. It's, it's our leadership here that matters. And, and I do love, I do love them being a lot more direct, being a lot harder on Trump, you know, and of course now we got the split screen of, and you're dealing with it on Fox. I'm sure, you know, it, it, you got the split screen of Trump on trial, you know, going to New York and you've got Joe Biden out in Scranton and going around the country. That split screen world is going to be very interesting these next few months. I, I think you've got a lot ahead of you on Fox trying to, trying to point that out. Cause you know, I had this woman, uh, Julia Jetsky who's a St. Louis native, as it turns out, on the show about a month ago. And Juliet's full-time job is called Decoding Fox News. So she catches your clips and she watches Fox all day and decodes it. And, and one of the things I found fascinating about her conversation was she says what she's discovered is she compares what Fox runs versus what they don't. Right. Uh, like so she's like the NPR newsroom because that's one of her favorites is is a, a lot of the way the shop Fox shapes the narrative is not that they don't they just don't show things. Right. Do you find right. yourself trying to kind of get those facts that aren't being shown? I'd seen you do it. You know, is it hard to get the facts and they're not showing in their stories? I mean, is that one of your goals, you think? Yeah, no doubt. Like, and, and listen, I don't, I don't, I don't do talking points, man. I, I speak yeah. from my heart and my head. Yeah. And yeah, you know, just like yesterday, I was on for a whole hour. I was on a show called uh, Outnumbered. It's for conservative women and then yeah. me. Uh, and again, I see the hate mail on Twitter and, and Instagram, and you know, people want to follow us at Patrick Murphy PA. But like, I, I see it. I see the good stuff too, by the way, right? Yeah. And, I, and I and I know they say don't read it, but I read it real quick. I don't respond because I'm just like, hey, like I just try and take it in and digest it. But yesterday I was on, and they're like. Look at how great President Trump is. He's out there at this bodega. The bodega. You know, he's out there, you know, there. He's with the people he loves. He's and Joe Biden and Scranton behind a microphone. I'm like, time out a second. I'm like, I go, I go, Donald Trump. And he's like, look at they're persecuting me. They're going after Trump. I'm with the people. I'm like, that guy was born on third base. And he's acting like he hit a triple. He's acting like he's some victim. He's not a victim. It's in America, we believe in the Constitution. We believe in things like the rule of law. And if you do the crime, you better be ready to do the time. Yeah. And, you know, we'll see how he gets a fair shake. He gets a fair trial. He gets a jury trial. We'll see how it shakes out, right? Yeah. And, and, and if he's found not guilty, you know, I'll see fine. If he's found guilty, I'll see fine. Yep. That, that's for him and his maker and, and the American people what they want to do. But I will tell you this. 
I will never forget after I was on, right, on Outnumbered, a Republican congressman that is a veteran texted me. He's, he's, you know, a friend. And he goes, Murphy, you should have brought out. He goes, you know, and again, this is a Republican congressman. Text me this. Murphy, I, I, you, you just kicked ass. I love that. He goes, but let me tell you something. Donald Trump, man of the people, the guy is a germaphobe. He doesn't shake people's hands. He doesn't like me around people. He doesn't want people touching him. And I, he goes, you sure brought that up. I'm like, hey, man, text me in the middle of the show. Not like the way you were. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me tips, like, you know, tips when like, I need him, brother. Perfect, yeah, he's like, I need some ideas. Like, you know, throw it out there. There's commercial breaks for a reason. Like, so, yeah. but, but I will tell you that there are patriots, what I call the silent majority out there. Okay. You know, the patriots that, that love America, that put our country first and are tired of the partisanship. And I get it, man. We have red team jerseys and blue team jerseys, and we're going to battle it out the next six months. And that's okay. And that's democracy and democracy is messy. Totally get it. But at the end of the day, after November 5th, after election day, let's come back together as Americans. Let's figure out a way to come together and, and move the ball forward. Because I tell you what, man, our adversaries out there are throwing tens of millions of dollars to divide us. Yep. They're propping up the far left to prop up the far right. And they want us to, to be divided from within. That's their only chance to beat the greatest country in the world. There you go. And I tell you, that is a great place to finish this conversation. <laughs> That's yeah. Patrick. I love you to death, man. I appreciate all your time. I appreciate you going to the, the den of the thieves there <laughs> and having yeah. these honest conversations and, and still fighting for us and for our fellow veterans. Uh, most important question I always ask every show, where can they find your brother? Where can they send you the hate mail? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, on social, it's at Patrick Murphy PA. And then, you know, I'm on LinkedIn too. And if, and if uh, you know, any of our folks, you know, follow me on LinkedIn, I'll follow you back, connect with you and stuff like that. But, uh, Hey, I'm out there. I'm moving chicken. I'm That's out right. there. I do a lot of Harris Faulkner, uh, 11 o'clock hour. I do a lot of outnumbered. I do a lot of America reports from one to two. Uh, I do a lot of Fox business on Neil Cavuto, et cetera. But yeah. uh, the reality of it is, is like, I'm out there, you know, moving and shaking because I, I love our country like you do, Fred. And, and it's okay to be out there uh, and, and make the argument uh, about why I don't work for the Biden team. I don't work. I, I work for my brothers and sisters of our great nation. Uh, our great, our, our country has given you, me, and our brothers and sisters so much. We should have this attitude of gratitude, and we should figure out a way to give back. And that's one thing I would say. One last thing: our American veterans are civic assets to this nation. One, they're more likely to be independent. Number two, they're more likely to vote in elections than non-veterans. Number three, they're more likely to be employed. They're more likely to start a small business for that small business to be successful. They're more likely to be little league coaches and pastors in their churches. They are assets to this nation. So please, live a purpose-driven life. Continue to serve. Continue to give back in your community, in your country, and make this world a better place every single day. God bless you, brother. Man, I appreciate you so much, man. What a great way to think that. Thanks for coming in and catching up with me, man. You you Cheers. You know, someone told me there are science backed ingredients that could help me feel 15 years younger in just a matter of months. I wouldn't have believed it. Well, then I tried Qualia Senolytics. You know, as we age, everyone accumulates senescent cells in their body. Senescent cells cause symptoms of aging, such as aches and pains, slow workout recoveries, sluggish mental and physical energy that I know so well, all associated with that middle age feeling. Now, also known as zombie cells, they're old and worn out and serving a no useful function for your health anymore, but they're taking up space and nutrients from our healthy cells. You know, much like pruning the yellow and dead leaves and plants in my garden, Qualia Senolytic removes those worn out senescent cells to allow for the rest of them to thrive in your body. You take it just two days a month. The formula is non-GMO, vegan, as well as gluten-free, and the ingredients are meant to complement one another, factoring in the combined effect of all the ingredients together. But best of all, on top of all that, you have a 100-day money-back guarantee. And since taking Qualia Senolytics, I have had higher energy levels, I feel 15 years younger, more productive, enthusiastic in life, not to mention, importantly for me, less aches and pains. Now, resist aging at the cellular level. Try Qualia Senolytic. Go to neurohacker.com slash Fred for up to $100 off, and then use code FRED at checkout for an additional 15% off. That's neurohacker.com slash Fred for an extra 15% off of your purchase. And man, thanks Neurohacker for sponsoring our show. 
man, I got him fired up at the end there, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, 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 you can see why I like Patrick so much. We've been we've been friends for years now. Very fortunate. We we were both, of course, in the uh, in the first uh, first wave into Iraq, and uh, he's gone on to do great public service. I'm often jealous of his of his his drive to service. Uh, I've I've met few men. A uh, few people who have such a, a, a just a, a constant drive to find ways to give back. And he was a brilliant undersecretary of the Army. He was the acting secretary of the Army for quite a while uh, under Mr. Obama and, and just, a, just a, a great asset to the country. So I hope you follow him. I hope you enjoy the conversation and, and, and give him a break when he's on Fox News doing his best to, to tell the true story. Uh, I love hanging out with you guys. I won't go on too long. We've, we've been talking for a while. As always, you can find us right here on the My Such Network every Friday night at 11. Uh, follow us on On Democracy Pod on, on YouTube as well. I'm so proud. I, you know, getting more of these, getting more of our fellow Democrats elected into Congress. Uh, the Forgotten Democrats, is, of course, I'm a national chairman of Forgotten Democrats. We'll be telling you a lot more about them. And in our first cycle, uh, all the money, all the money that goes to Forgotten Democrats goes to candidates. And I've been talking to a lot of them. Uh, if you haven't caught it on that topic, uh, the new show called uh, In the Hot Seat with FP Wellman is broadcasting exclusively on the Myest Touch Network uh, just randomly. I uh, just had some incredible conversations. Just talked to Adam Frisch, who took on Lauren Boebert, chased her out of her district because he's doing so well. Uh, if you haven't caught the In the Hot Seat shows yet on Myest Touch Network, please check them out. You, you won't regret it. 10, 15-minute conversations with candidates from all over the country. Some you know, some you don't. All of them you should. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for being part of this fight. Look, you heard it from Patrick here from me. We are the ones who will make this country better. We're the ones that can push back against the lies. We could push back against the myth. But the best way to do it is to fight, fight, get out there, find your local election, find your local candidate needs help. Go to your school board meeting. Go to your city council. We are having incredible luck. We just had an election for local school offices here in Missouri, where I live, swept all the far right moms demand people out. They lost one of our local one of our local. Uh, uh, Val Preacher, one of our local like talk radio right wing guys, endorsed 13 candidates for school board and not one one. <laughs> it was 0 for 13 because all these radical people were trying to invade the school boards in our area. That should give you hope. Uh, I was talking to my friend, Dr. Chris Jones on Arkansas the other day. All four congressional seats in Arkansas are contested by a Democrat this cycle. So those really... They're, they're there, guys. It's springtime. I've got some seedlings growing in my garden right now. Look for those seedlings. Look for the hope because we're coming back. We will fight from the, every inch of this, every inch of this. But uh, the war is not won. We're winning. But the way to fight is to get in the fight. There's no other way. So thanks. Stay in the fight. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fred Wellman. We'll see you next week.